to select and choose you to witness the month of Ramadan is that Allah wants to bestow his favors and uh, bounties upon you and for this reason is, is that we we must um, thank him uh, for this uh, gift which is a uh, uh, something that is uh, is very big. So we congratulate uh, all of you. We congrat congratulate also ourselves for having uh, been given the opportunity to witness this uh, month. Um, Alhamdulillah, we, we praise Allah for this, uh, and we pray that He make this month. A very beneficial month uh, for us that we achieve what the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam desire us to achieve in this uh, in this month, and we try to observe it according to the intention of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What was his intention for witnessing this? Uh, Holy month and to practice it. Um, Alhamdulillah, as you as you all know, is uh, something that is uh, very sad in the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that whenever this month comes, there is always. Uh, uh, what you call uh, debates and what I like to refer as to as the moon wars <laughs> people fighting over um, moon to say that when is the month of Ramadan starting or when is it ending when is the last day of Ramadan when is the first day of Ramadan all of this uh, Allah knows best it really points to uh, missing the, the, the objective of why Allah created us and also missing the objective of uh, to have our focus on Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this moon was is something that if somebody look with the eye of sincerity in the early Muslims we, n we never have it today Shaykh Ibrahim who mentioned he said if you study the lives of the Sahabas and you study how they received the month of Ramadan and how they dealt with the issue of looking at the moon we never have any issues today because the matter is very clear and hence, the, uh, if you read the book of Allah, Allah says, Ya ayuha ladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la allakum tattaqoon. O you people with iman, fasting has been prescribed for you as it has been prescribed from those before you. Now, in that section, there's a couple of ayahs that goes the, the next ayah where Allah speaks about the, the month of Ramadan, He actually says, "Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an huda linnasi wa bijinati min al-huda wal-furqan faman shahida minkum falyasum The month of Ramadan is a month in which the uh, Qur'an was revealed as a means of guidance and mercy and bount Allah's bounties and all of the good that the Quran brings. So Allah says, Faman Shahida. So whoever witness, whoever witness this month, Falyasum, let him fast. Now the witnessing of the month uh, to, to to witness something it means to, to 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 go to is to is to try to look for the 
for the moon that will start this month. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say in a, in a hadith, "Sumu li ru'yatihi wa ftiru bi ru'yatihi." If you see the the the, the moon start your fast, and if you see the moon again, break your fast. Now. If you are in a place and that place is not possible to see the moon, now you want to hear from someone in another place where they are able to see the moon. You in a place where it is not possible to see the moon means that uh, you are no longer following what Rasulullah ordered. Because Rasulullah say, "So many ru'ya tihi fast when you see it." If you are in a place where you don't see it, you don't start your fast. Because the order is, if you see it, start your fast. And if you see it again, stop fasting, meaning please eat now. Now you want to hear from someone in a, in a place where the, 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 the moon is seen. You are in a place where the moon is not seen, now you want to fast. This is... Also, it goes against the eye where Allah says, Man, man shahida minkum. If from among you they, they witness, they see this man, faliasumu, then start your fast. You want to start your fast, but you have not made the shahada of, see, of, 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 of the month itself. It, has not, it hasn't started. Because maybe you, you want to align with somebody else, maybe in another place. If people focus on following Rasulullah, we don't have any problem in Islam. Because the focus is not on following Rasulullah, but is on following somebody else. That's why we have this problem in the Ummah. You, you can't have more than one leader. Rasulullah's word is final. There's a hadith that uh, is, is mentioned in the Bulugh al-Maram by Imam ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. He say uh, in the, under, under the section on the all the hadiths that are related to the month of Ramadan, a rider came with a a, 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 a what you call uh, with a conveyance. I don't remember what is a it's a it's a camel or it's a horse, but I think it is a horse. And then he mentioned to him he was from traveling from a place which was less than a journey, a day's journey, and then he reaches Medina and then he finds Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. And he tells him that from the place where he's coming from, they already see the moon. So even Abbas says, for that place, they stop fasting. For us who haven't seen it, we continue. <laughs> this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he come from the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the leaders and the elders in this ummah. So if people fo focus on following the word of Rasulullah, then they, 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 they stop arguing about whether to follow the moon uh, of another country or versus this country is what we must do or what we don't do. Say for an example, you follow the moon of another country. How is this going to increase or decrease your Iman? When you reach Allah on Yomul Qiyamah, Allah is going to say, well, you fasted before the, the Ramadan started, so Allah is going to punish you for fasting before Ramadan starts. It doesn't make sense to spend so much time <coughs> in media and everywhere else to talk about things that maybe might not be even relevant when you meet Allah on Yomul Qiyamah. Because the focus should be on how do we observe the month of Ramadan, how should we prepare ourselves to receive the message from Allah? How should we try to be like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Because this month is a month in which every believer, they taste how was a normal day of Rasulullah used to be outside Ramadan. Rasulullah, he used to make tahajjud every night until Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says in a hadith, uh, his legs, they will have some cracks and he used to ask him, why you trouble yourself to pray so much? 
is, uh, is it not that Allah forgive you all your future sins and past sins? He said, should I not be a grateful slave? This was the uh, normal day of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Muslims, they get the month of Ramadan in order to, to taste and experience what the normal day of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was like. Because all of us, the Prophet says, Khudu anni manasikakum, take from me all your, your rights. Sallu kama ra'aytu muni usalli. Make salah the same way how you see me making salah. So every action we have an order to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the way he make it. That's why they say, taqwa is to follow the order of Allah and to avoid the prohibitions of Allah in such a way that Allah wants it, not in such a way that you yourself wants to do it. If you do something according to yourself, Allah don't accept it. But if you do it according to how Allah wants it, Allah accepts it. And how Allah wants it is how Rasulullah did it. That's why Allah says, <laughs> If they say they, they, they love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِ then follow me. Your proof in loving Allah, your proof in your saying that you love Allah, you find it in how you follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How much you follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is how much Allah's love will come to you. Your measure of loving Allah must be seen in how much you follow Rasulullah. Is Islam is not the religion of following one's desires. Islam is not the religion of following one's nafs. Islam is the religion of following what Allah wants. There is a hadith um, in which um, it's, it's many, um, what you call uh, fuqaha speak about this hadith the hadith of establishing a legitimate uh, lineage, uh, what, what you call um, a legitimate lineage in Islam comes from when a child is born within a marriage. Now, Oteba uh, ibn Waqas, before he passed away, tells his brother Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas to say, as so and so is is pregnant and it is me who made her to be pregnant. This was in the time of Jahiliya. And then on the other hand, the person who was made pregnant was a slave, a female slave that belonged to a man called Zama'a. Zama'a was the father of Sauda. Sauda was the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's one of the Ummahatul Mu'minin. His brother knew that this uh, slave uh, uh, lady belongs to her father, and as is known in Islam, a slave a lady is treated similar to a wife if a person wants to have relations with them. There is nothing wrong with that. In Islam, we know that is, is, is permissible because Allah permits it in the Quran. Now, on the day of the Fatih in Makkah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes with the sahabas from Medina. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, the first thing comes into his mind, he say, I must go and look for my brother's child. He finds his brother's child. At that time, the boy is about five years old. He said, this is my brother's child. Now, at that time, his brother had passed away. On the other hand, the, the son of that man, Uzama, he says, no, that is not your brother's child. That is my father's child. That is my brother. <laughs> because you came upon her while he used to stay with my... So basically, he used to... What you call him? He used to cheat. You understand? Now, both of them, they argue. And then they go to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
When they go to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they say, "Rasul, oh Rasul, here's the matter. This is my brother's child, and you can see the way he looks. He's my brother. It's like Moya al Shanel. Rasulullah sallam, he looks at him. He, he sees that no, there's a hundred percent resemblance that this child belongs to the brother of Saad ibn Abi Waqas. But Sharia prevents Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said that al waladu lil farashi, the child belongs to the man to whom this lady was belonged to at the time in in, in a legal way. Rasulullah sallam he recognized that this boy doesn't really belong to this man because of the way he looks, but because in Sharia because he was married. With, I mean, he 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 he, he, he uh, they, they, they were joined and I was what you call it, uh, legally in Sharia, so the child will belong to this marriage. Hmm. So if a, if a, if a, if a, if a person comes with a if a, if a, if a woman comes with pregnancy, and then within Sharia in, in Islam that pregnancy will belong to the man who is married to that man. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Wali Ahiri Al Hajaru, as for the one who cheated, he gets nothing. So the child will belong to, to, to the mother and will belong to the man. And Rasulullah, he used to see that this man, this child, he doesn't really belong to this person. But because of the Sharia, he said that that child will belong to the father who was legally contracted to that woman whom he used to be with during the period. Now, this example why I am bringing it, and also to prove that Rasulullah knew, he tells the sister of this brother, Abdul, he says, as for you, whenever he is around in your house, you must observe hijab. Because he, he understood that this is really not your, 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 your actual brother. Hmm. So it's, 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 it's haram for you to be, to uncover your hair in his presence. But when he judged, he said, the child belongs to this family. Now, why I am bringing this? I am bringing this because, uh, you know, people should respect Sharia. You can't force matters, you know. If uh, a moon is cited now here, it is cited. If it is not cited, another country is cited. The other country, they, they fast, this country doesn't fast. And vice versa. You, you don't try to pull strings and try to bend things and follow your nuts. Because maybe somebody wants to align with... Because we know, if somebody says, no, me, my sheikh is in Saudi Arabia, and therefore my eat will be with Saudi Arabia. Another one who says, no, my sheikh is in uh, Nigeria, and therefore I'm aligned with Nigeria. Another one who says, no, my sheikh is in India, and therefore I'm, my eat will be with, well, observed with India. In Islam, it doesn't work like that. The focus is always, all the time, Rasulullah. Rasulullah. What did the Rasulullah order you when Ramadan comes? That is the focus. He said, Sumuli Ru'yati, when you see it, you fast. If you live in an area where somebody saw it, maybe you didn't see it, because that person lives in, in your area, and at that time, it is possible to see the moon in that area. Then that person, he saw it on your behalf. That's why the Shahada of a person who is... Uh, uh, just is taken so that that person can can can, can observe but what, why I say this is a sad state of affairs is because it comes in every year and it distracts people you know people there are so many people that can't even recite Surah Fatiha who, who, who can take time to teach those people there are so many people that don't know the hadith of Rasulullah this, the ulama, they are supposed to be teaching people what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say. They are supposed to be teaching people what the Quran say, not to be arguing in the members the whole day and night for two, three days. Sometimes it takes a whole week. Instead of having programs where people learn about <coughs> Rasulullah and the teaching of Islam, now we hear about, uh, no, this Molana led us astray. We were supposed to be fasting because the nearest country saw the moon. And the other one says, no, it wasn't the moon, it was this or it was that. 
All we hear is the moon. The whole the whole seven days of Ramadan is past now. We only hear about the moon, the moon, the moon, the moon. There's a hadith of Rasulullah Sallam said, a, a, a nation is never given guidance until they start arguing, except that they are arguing and debating is a sign that their guidance has left them. Hmm. That when, they, when, when a nation starts arguing and debating and doing all these things, is a sign that the guidance has actually left the nation. And this is why it's important to talk about this and also to alert those people who spend time in discussing these matters. These matters, when you look at them, they are not really about unifying Muslims. They are more about which scheme are you following or which politics or, or, or what you call are you aligned with? Which country are you aligned? It has nothing to do with following Islam and following Rasulullah and the unity of the Muslims. And this is what the shaitan wants. Because perhaps maybe he knows he's going to be changed. Because they say when Ramadan starts, <laughs> all the shayateen they are put in chains and so he uses maximum power to try and make people to argue instead of trying to prepare for this holy month which is a month of mercy the month of increase the month of experiencing the generosity of Allah so in any case I, it was not my wish to talk about this but I don't know how it came but I, I just wanted to uh, to congratulate us and uh, that uh, Alhamdulillah Allah has chosen us to witness this month the month in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that it is a month in which there is a day that is uh, there is a night which is better than a thousand months he said it is a month of giving it is a month of increase increase spiritually also increase materially and he encouraged people to be generous in this month because Allah's generosity in this month also it, it, it increases it, it goes higher and higher people witness Allah frees many people from the hellfire for just because it's Ramadan his generosity increases he said he, he locks up all the shayateen like the Prophet said was so that is shayateen so when this month comes all the shayateen they are chained so they don't go and disturb the believers in terms of using this month for really what it needs to be. Our goal in this month should be how to cut ourselves off from the entire creation except Allah. That is our goal in this month, how to connect ourselves with Allah. That's why we fast. Now fast has got three levels. The, it is the fast from the lowest level <clears throat> is a fast from food and drink and having uh, relations with one spouse for those that are married. For those that are not married, who obviously it is not allowed. <laughs> Whether it's Ramadan or it's not Ramadan. Uh, you, 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 you stay away from food and drink and having uh, relations with one spouse from the dawn to dusk or from the time of uh, Sehri up to the, 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 the setting of the sun. It is a one level of uh, fast. The, 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 the second level of fasting is to restrict the limbs of your body from engaging in those things that you would normally engage in. Even if maybe those things are things that are... We, this, we're not talking about staying away from haram. No. Because that already before Ramadan it is haram to do what is haram but these are the things that maybe you used to doing in our time now maybe I can uh, make it like somebody likes to watch movies for example try to fast from watching movies in this month somebody maybe likes to spend time maybe in doing some other things uh, they are not necessarily haram but uh, they you know, they are, maybe they are permissible, but they are not necessarily haram. But if you cut your time from those things in order to, 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 to gain more time and make the time uh, uh, for the sake of Allah and use it and spend it to connect with Allah, t take this time because many people don't have time now. Go to the hospital, 
visit the other people who don't get visitors there. Maybe take your time, do some extra work where you get extra money and take that money. Go to the people who are needy. There's many people who go who, who, who sleep in my pipe in. They don't, they don't know what they eat. They don't know what they drink. Uh, morning and evening. All what they get is what they receive from people or from the dustbins. We normally see them where they pick their food from. You know, every, 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 every Tuesday, whenever I take out my, 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 my trash in outside, some of the people who come and take out the boxes, you know what, I, I observe them. What they do sometimes, they take out the food that is thrown in the bin. Mm. Some of them, they even eat it while I see them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I will just stop them and maybe go to the house and then maybe take a 20 rand, 50 rand or 100 rand or whatever it is and says, no, go buy food for your family. If somebody, sometimes he can eat from the bin while he's still taking out the other, uh, what you call it, trash, it means life is tough for people out there. Right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day was performing Asar Salah. Immediately after Asar Salah, he did he just got up as if uh, he was scared of something. He jumped from the masjid. He went straight into his house. He, he came back and then he, he had some, 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 some money with him and then, he, and then he gave it away. But the Sahabas, they were like, this is something strange about you, O Rasul of Allah. The way you jumped is like, is, is, is everything okay? You know, they asked him. He said, while I was making salah, just when I finished, I remembered someone gave me something earlier in the day. I don't want this day to pass before the sunset. I must give it in charity already. Mm -hmm. This is for Rasulullah to teach us how we should deal with what we have. Because what we have doesn't really belong to us. It belongs to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna lihi rajiun. From Allah we come and to Him is our return. So what we have is only things that Allah has borrowed us to, to use for the time being. If we use it in His way, Alhamdulillah, Allah He recorded for us, we find it in the Akhirah. If we don't use it in His way, Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi is lost. Because when you die, it gets distributed to whoever is remains behind. So it, it, it is never used. Rather, you spend it and then you use it in the in the, in the way Allah in, that will, will will please Allah. This is the month of spending. That's why Rasulullah Sallam said you must try, you must spend as much as you uh, spend as much as you can. There are many things that you can do to spend. You know to to help to to help out. Spending is not just only in money, but it's also in energy. If you have energy, you know you can help someone to do some work that maybe it's too much work they have. You do it for them. Allah gets reward. You, you, get, you get the reward for it. That is part of sadaqa. You see somebody that needs some assistance. You assist that person. That is part of sadaqa. That is a second level of fasting. The third level of fasting is when you fast from anything except Allah. You fast from anything except Allah, and that's why when you fast, the thought of Allah is is pushed down your 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 mind and your heart and your soul every single moment. Because every time you see a banana, you're like, no, I'm fasting. <laughs> you, you never wanna go near banana because you you remember that I'm fasting. <laughs> <laughs> right. That will remind you that you are fasting for the sake of Allah. So you're never gonna eat anything. Even if someone wants to feed you, you will take it, but you remember Allah. So the idea of fasting is to be is to allow you to be conscious of Allah all the time. And then when the time for fast comes, then this is, is your reward. They say the fasting person gets two rewards. The one reward at the time of breaking the fast and the enjoyment they experience uh, that they fasted for the sake of Allah. It's some kind of uh, pleasure they have. Allah grants them in them in Sakina. 
The, the second one is when the day they meet Allah and they actually receive all of what the fasting they used to do for Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the people who observe uh, the fast the way Rasulullah observed it. Amen. And we try to perform our tarawi salah. Uh, tarawi uh, in the masajid, in the houses of Allah, Amen. is the sunnah that was established by the Khulafai Rashidin, particularly Sayyidina Umar ibn al Khattab. Even though Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to do tarawi at home. And he used to say he, uh, he doesn't want to do it in the masjid because he fears that if you do it in the masjid, maybe Allah will make it mandatory. Like Farad. Out of his rahma and mercy for the ummah, he used to do it at home. But of course, when Sayyidina Umar came, his uh, sharia now is uh, closed. Allah has sealed the sharia, so nothing can be changed. So Sayyidina Umar is also a rightly guided khalifa. Rasulullah said, uh, follow my sunnah and the sunnah of, of Khulafai Rashidin after me. So if they start something, you follow them, is part of following the order of Rasulullah. So he, he is the one that he saw people making tarawi. One was making it in one corner, the other one making it in another corner, another one making it there. He says, no, 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 no. Same like the moon was now. <laughs> Say this is like chaos now. Rather, everybody come together we we'll appoint one person who read Quran for you and then we we'll finish Bismillah, the, the, the whole Quran in Ramadan. That Sunnah, he started it. Sayyiduna Ali ta'ala anhu later on in his Khilafat, when he saw the people in Iraq every year in Ramadan gathering in the masajids and making the, the tarawih, he said, May Allah have mercy on Umar. Look at how beautiful the, 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 the lights, the nur of Allah is full in the masajids. Mm -hmm. That was the statement of Sayyiduna Ali confirming that what Sayyiduna Umar started is sealed and is approved, is accepted. Mm -hmm. So this, Shah Ibrahim wrote in the Jawah Rasail, he said, when the month of Ramadan comes, go to the houses of Allah and pray with me, everybody with the believers, and, and, and make your tarawih salah there. So we, we encourage ourselves and we encourage everyone to try to, 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 to withhold ourselves mm -hmm and have patience with Allah and observe the Tarawih Salah and also observe the, 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 the fasting by day. Sheikh Pai, like I would, I, would, I would end with this, he likes to beautifully say, don't do business with Allah. Don't do business with Allah. Meaning, you do it because you feel that you, uh, you think that if you do this, then you're going to get reward. Right? So, how you do business with Allah, like, you know, with fasting, somebody, you always you will fast because it's mandatory to fast. Or when you do your salah, you only do the fara'id. If you leave the fara'id, you feel, I know, I will be punished, therefore I must do it, right? That is business with Allah because it's like um, you are exchanging something with another. But if you do, a nafila, like a tarawi salah, or like your, 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 your sunnah salahs, uh, other than the fara'id, then that is nothing, because if you do it, you get the reward. If you don't do it, then there's nothing. So do, doing a nafila is a sign that you're doing it for the sake of Allah. Because it's, it's, it's optional. To do something that is optional is a sign that you, you, you actually love Allah. But to do fara'id only, it means you fear that eh, if I skip a fara'id, then I'm going to Jahannam. That's business with Allah. So deal with Allah because it's Allah. Don't deal with Allah because it's business. So let's try to do our fara'id of fasting during the day and our nafila of praying during the night. If due to some reason, maybe somebody can't make it in the masjid for whatever reason, at least don't go to sleep without doing the the, the, the salah in the, in the in this this night this Ramadan one 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 sunnah you do or one nafil you do it, it it will be counted as if you have completed a farad outside Ramadan 
And one farad that you do, it, it should be counted as though you have done 70 farad outside Ramadan. You know, on Yom Al-Qiyamah, when they wear the scales, they say, okay, put his salahs here. They put all the salah in one scale. Then they find, hey, some are missing. When, they, when, they, when your farahid are missing, they say, okay, let's look at his nawafil. If he has any nawafil, maybe, for an example, maybe they say for so many nawafil, they will be equal to one farad. They will take all your nawafil, all your optional duties, they will put it on the scale until they say, okay, no, now he, he has uh, completed what it was ordered for him to do. But if a person never used to do nawafil, uh, that means you come with like, uh, you know, if the farai they say they are not enough and there is no nawafil to pack it up in the Nilayu and the So that's why it's important to not only focus on the farai but to also put time to do the nawafil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq Amen. and accept your fasting and our fasting, Amen. accept your standing up and our standing up Amen. and to strive in this month to be a better person when we come out from this month. Amen. To We pray Allah, he give all of us uh, wilaya to the uzma. When we, uh, when, we, uh, when we finish, by the time we finish this month, Allah, you already, he, he, he connect, we, we connect with him. Uh, we, we cut all, everything that is other than him from us so that we only connect with him mm-hmm. and uh, we pray that he make us follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he purify all our hearts and all our nafs and all our uh, lower selves all of this dirtiness Allah he purify it uh, uh, through this month and we become like better uh, people and we also <coughs> pray uh, that he he's continue to support all the, those that are working for Islam uh, tirelessly, especially the mashayikh. Mm-hmm. And also we pray especially for Sheikh Bai, for Allah to open up his way.